Hello everybody, this is a dream of many young people. This is Charles University. Charles University in Prague in Czech language, Universita Karola, is the main university of the Czech Republic, the oldest university in the Central Europe, and one of the oldest universities in the world. This university was founded by Emperor Charles IV in 1348. At first it was a small building with a very pure training program. But over time Charles University has endured many changes and now it is a huge institution which consists of large number of buildings located both in Prague and in Czech Republic. More than 50,000 students study at this university and it is included in the association of the European universities together with Oxford, Sorbonne, University of Munich and Geneva and others. Today we are starting our new direction called Sight from Inside. Here we will lead a stories about different organizations, how we work, what we do and how can you get there. The first project is Charles University. And now we will tell you about the life of one of the department of that university. And also, if you are interested in science, want to get precision knowledge in this greatest university, and if you want to get PhD degree, we will tell you how to do it. Stay with us. Well, let's go inside of the science world. Now we are in the building of the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics. Yes, right, this is MATFIS. And we are going to the Department of Macromolecular Physics. Here I received my PhD degree. This is the best department not only because it is located at the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, but also because their work is kind of responsive and solid team. We are always interested in new things and we are always having a lot of work. I finished my study in 2012 and I worked in different teams and organizations. Now I am convinced that I have not yet met a better team. So, let's go inside. Now we are in the department and I will get right to the point. I want to tell you immediately, this is the most important place of the department. Here is growing the future of our world and the future of our science. Here work students and of course PhD students. Yes, and don't be surprised, there are Russian students and we will meet with some of them. So, here on this floor and on the floor above there are other scientific workers, the head of the department, the secretary and of course everywhere there are various laboratories with measuring and experimental equipment. Here is the office of the person to whom we are actually going. Give me my camera please, now I come to him. Oh, hello, Andre. <laughs> How are you? Maybe a cup of tea? Yes, let's have some tea or coffee. Well, let's go. Shall we begin? So, I start my story firstly about Andre. First of all, this is my dear friend and he was also my supervisor when I was as a PhD student. He raised me, teach me and made me a PhD degree. The second, he is one of the leaders of the department and he is the generator of scientific ideas. 
Well, all other information Andre will tell us. Andre, could you introduce yourself, please? Tell me briefly, who are you on this department and what are you doing here? Well, you have already mentioned my name. It's Andre Shukurov. I am an associate professor at the Department of Macromolecular Physics, Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, Charles University, Prague, Czech Republic. What are you doing here? What is your work on this department? Well, on one hand, the position of an associate professor implies the participation in the educational process, that is, teaching, lectures, seminars and laboratory work. On the other hand, and this is actually a larger part of my work, it involves the scientific activity. I mean, the organization and running various scientific experiments, scientific discoveries and scientific publications. How many employees at the department you have? And is there a division into the groups according to scientific directions? Well, I will not give you an exact number on how many employees we have, but roughly it's about 30 people. Do you have divisions into the groups? Yes, we have a group that deals with theoretical issues. Another group is engaged in the study of classical polymers, including spectroscopy of polymers and related topics. And uh, the third group, which I belong to, develops advanced nanomaterials with specific structure, which in the end must have special properties. And how many people in your group? If you take only staff, there are seven or eight persons and about the same number of the students of all types. I mean, bachelor, master and doctoral students. It is clear. And who is the head of the group and the head of the department? Is it the same person or not? These are different people. The head of the department changes approximately once in seven years. Speaking about our group, Professor Biedemann is the founder and the constant leader of our team. The group has been founded more than 20 years ago, and now we are still expanding our scientific activities. So, I remember one thing. Earlier, when I was a student in Russian, I was always interested in the answer to such a philosophical question. Is it difficult to be a scientist? What is your opinion? Well, my friend, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> so, what question such answer? <laughs> in general, if you like this business, if you like what you do, then you don't feel any difficulties and they are overcome easily. The main thing is interest, and if you have interest, then there are no problems for you. This is works in any field. That's what I wanted to say, thanks. I mean, if a person is involved in the process, and he is really interested in what he does, then the difficulties, which are of course always present in the creative work, are most likely to be coped with. And now I think you are agree with me, that the most important thing in the department is students. To maintain the life of the department, you need doctoral students and any students in principle. That's right. We need students from the lowest echelons. The lowest rank here is the bachelor students, then masters, and then the highest student level is PhD, doctorants, as we call them here. We are really interested in a big number of students so that they promote the scientific directions which we are interested in. And now we come to the most important question. How is your situation with students? I mean PhD students. I saw that you have not small amount of students. Do you have enough students? The number is never sufficient. 
We have them and they are wonderful, but we are constantly interested in acquiring an even greater number of students for PhD studies. It means that you need more work in hands. They are not enough, I would say so. So, how many students per year can you take for the PhD study? Now I'm, I'm just talking about doctoral students, PhD students. In fact, there is no upper limit. It's just not established. And who decides? The supervisor decides. It depends on the particular supervisor, mainly on his ability to generate and pursue the research topics for a large number of students. It means there are no limits. How much students you can take? I guess yes. If we speak personally about me, I try to take one or two students per year. The first reason is that there are no enough hands to carry out all the experiments that are planned. And the second reason is succession, let's say like that. I mean, those PhD students who approach the completion of their studies, like third or fourth year, they are already experienced. They have acquired a certain level of knowledge and skills in the laboratory, and then they can very effectively transfer the accumulated knowledge and skills to their young colleagues. If we miss and do not take anyone for a year or two, and that's unfortunately happened in the past, then certain troubles may appear. Gap in succession. That is clear. The student team must be replenished constantly. Gradual transfer of knowledge. That is, in the first year, a person comes and he doesn't learn immediately how to work here. It takes some time. And it is necessary that elder colleagues also take this time to transfer their knowledge to youngsters. Can you briefly tell me what need to do or prepare or how to come here to study in your department? Well, let's start from the beginning of this process. For example, a student studies at the university in the last year. He found that you have vacancy in PhD study and he really wants to apply for that. What's next? First of all, contact me and of course I will tell all the details. However, in general, the most important thing is desire. I mean that person should really want to study in the PhD program with us. In the second place, this is knowledge of English, at least at some basic level. Students must be able to communicate with other people in English. They must be able to explain the meaning of their diploma work and understand what other people are saying and asking. But in fact, we don't require the Oxford level of English proficiency. The simple level is enough. Formally, the level B2. Okay, let me first explain that, at least in the European countries, the level of proficiency in foreign languages is divided into alphabetic categories starting from A. A is the lowest level. For the entry exams to the Charles University, the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, the level B2 is usually enough. This is not the most difficult level. What about entry exams? Where can I get it? To be accepted for the doctoral study, one needs to pass two exams. The first is English. The conditions for this exam change from year to year. But at the moment, and today is 2019, it is a written exam in the form of a test with 100 questions and four options for answering each of them. One needs to choose the right answer. 50% of correct answers are required. In this case, you pass. If less than 50%, don't pass. Well, this is an exam in English, and it is usually the first examination. The next exam is actually an interview on the basics of physics. It means that a person briefly speaks about his diploma work in front of the acceptance board, 
explains the main ideas of what he was doing and the main results. As a rule, he's also asked about what he plans to do in the framework of his PhD study at our department. Well, sometimes the board may ask some kind of basic knowledge of physics. Are you paid for something when the student comes to the exam? It's not much. At the beginning, the person pays the admission fee. The application is submitted electronically via the internet site. That is, it's not necessary to send the documents in the paper form. The electronic application is registered and an administrative fee of about 540 Czech crowns should be paid by the bank transfer. This is a one-time fee and uh, according to the submitted application, the study department sends an official invitation to the applicant. The applicant then uses this invitation to apply for a short-term visa at the consulate of the Czech Republic in his country. So, if you need a visa, then you need this invitation. Yes. What about accommodation for new applicants which come to the exam? Are you give the accommodation for them? If we are talking about our department, we usually help the applicants who come for the examination. We pay their accommodation at the student hostel for a few days. The hostel is located close out there, but unfortunately it's not visible. The review will follow and then you will see everything afterwards. So it's about five minutes from here on foot. The hostel is very good. Students come here, let's say for five or six days, maybe for a week. In one day they pass the English exam, the next day they usually pass the interview. And then we have free time for everything. Usually it also takes some time to do some formalities that are required. Sometimes it is necessary to arrange for the diploma notification and an officially certified translation of the master diploma is needed. Well, in general it is clear. And if anyone will be interested in all details, then we can write you and ask you everything. Andre, other question. When usually the exam is beginning? Which dates? And when applicants need to apply to exam? Usually the application for the postgraduate study should be submitted by the end of April, that is, by April the 30th. The entrance exams are held about the 20th of June. But starting from this year, allegedly, there will be a new option. The entrance exams are going to be held twice a year. The first time in the summer, as it used to be, that is in June. And the second time, the application for the postgraduate study can be submitted by the end of December with exams happening in January. So, if we summarize at this stage, then if you want to be a PhD student at this department, it is necessary your desire, submit an application in timely manner, make a visa and come for entrance exam. You must also have a basic knowledge of English, prepare a presentation about your thesis, now the basic of physics and now what you will do in your PhD study. Okay, what's next? What kind of support do you offer to newly arrived doctoral students? Let's say that we pass exam and arrive to department. What kind of support awaits them? Financial support, stipend, accommodation is provided or not? Can you help them with visa preparation or not? Maybe some other supporting? That's right. The guaranteed fellowship for all the PhD students in the first year is 10,500 Czech crowns. And it's not taxable. I mean, this is the entire amount of money that the student receives per month. In fact, the total financial income of students, even in the first year, is always higher. There are additional sources for the financial support. All the students from outside of Prague, and especially foreigners, are provided with a hostel for the accommodation. What about the chance to get to this hostel? 
which is very close from here. Is it difficult to get there? Well, I'm not able to calculate the chances in percent, but all the students who come to us are provided with the accommodation in this hostel. Which is really comfortable. Yes, really five minute walk. Do you have other financial support here? Maybe is there something in your department? It depends on the particular department. The conditions can be different. If we are talking about our department, then yes, all the PhD students or doctoral students are typically accepted for a part-time job. This is not a lot of money, but medical insurance social and pension contributions are paid from this salary and also some small money remains personally for a student and probably another positive moment that it can be obtained working visa but the main thing that a person is employed he has official insurance and he do not need to pay for it that's right if a person lives on a student visa, then, in fact, he should take care of his own health insurance, which is a serious thing. If a person has an official job here, then the tax is deducted from his salary, also for the medical insurance. Here, he has the insurance as part of his employment. Do you provide some help with the visa preparation? Well, I don't know, maybe some kind of informative help or so on. Usually all the questions related to visa or residence permits should be solved by students themselves. So, you are providing only documents for that. And students, if they need a visa, go to the embassy, ask all what they need for visa. Yes, but our department provides all the necessary documents for obtaining this visa. Well, it is clear. And uh, what's the price of the hostel? Very simple question. The cost for one student is 3,500 Czech crowns per month. So, in principle, it is not bad. Look, a stipend of about 10,500. If there is an opportunity, we give you part of the bet. This is plus about two or two and a half thousand minus 3,000 for hostel. And as a result, there are remain about 10,000 tech rounds for life. If we recalculate, it is about 400 euros for life per month. I think it is not bad. Actually, it can be more because there are other bonuses possible. Okay, plus benefits. Well, at least 400 euros. I think that this is not bad for a student. Compared to what I received when I was student at my initial university, this is a big difference. Well, do you have other advantages of your department? For example, the new doctoral student arrive, have an accommodation, everything is okay, he receives this first stipend and he starts to study. What other advantages should he expect? Look, the main advantage. We give a young person the opportunity to acquire new knowledge and engage in scientific activities. Plus, the laboratories that we have, in my opinion, are well equipped with the scientific instruments for the development of advanced materials and for their analysis. These people, students, have a very good opportunity to master modern methods of research, characterization and diagnostics of nanomaterials with the use of plasma as the primary approach for the production of these materials. It means we get, let's say, a good experience. If we are planning to work in some organizations, we will have good knowledge and experience for that. That's right. They gain skills, knowledge and experience. Sure. And another question for this topic. Can you briefly describe what kind of laboratories and equipment there is in your department? 
Конечно, могу. Of course I can. Our group is developing new materials with certain structure, with certain chemical and physical properties. Mainly structured at nanoscale, based on metals, metal compounds, polymers, or their combinations. In general, our research can be divided into several sub-directions. One of them involves the development of nanomaterials, let's say, for fuel cell applications. This is when we use the energy of the sunlight to split ordinary water into hydrogen and oxygen, which can then be used as fuels to generate energy, for example, in the form of electricity. This is one direction. The second area is related to biomedical applications. For example, we are developing now new materials based on nanoparticles, which ideally should have both antibacterial and wound healing properties. We are doing this in collaboration with our Russian colleagues. The third direction can be distinguished as electrical discharges in liquids for processing of natural polymers. This is a huge class of very interesting substances, which nevertheless require a certain type of processing. And I'd like to mention one more field that we have just started. It's called plasma agriculture. This area is very poorly explored so far, but it can appear as very beneficial at the global world market scale. This is when plants or seeds of plants are processed using low-temperature plasma in order to improve their characteristics, such as germination or other parameters. Do you have equipment for all these works? The equipment for all of this is available. Plus, some part is being developed. We can also modify some existing devices to provide them with new functionalities. Our laboratories are in the state of constant regeneration, modification or upgrade. Do you have the equipment for analysis? For example, if you prepare something, how to understand what is it? how to analyze the surface or chemical composition. That's right. If we set aside the process of the material production, which represents a separate area of research by itself, then these materials need to be analyzed in some way. We use our own X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy. The surface of the materials is examined using atomic force microscopy, or scanning electron microscopy, or transmission electron microscopy. These are certainly more complex and more expensive equipment, but we have a direct access to these devices as well. Well, probably plus to all this, there is still interaction with other departments or universities. I mean that the missing information for the research can be found in other places. Without the cooperation, it is impossible to imagine the viability of any scientific group. It's just necessary. Of course, we have very powerful cooperation established with different groups both in the Czech Republic and with foreign colleagues from Germany, France, Japan and other countries. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. My name is Daniel. I'm a PhD student of the fourth year of study, and I'm from Russia. Cool. What are you doing here? Uh, okay, 
I'm trying to measure the plasma polymer nanoparticles by the atomic force microscopy. As you see here, it is possible to measure it. It measures relatively good. You can see there is not a secret. Are these nanoparticles? Yes, yes, there are polystyrene plasma polymer nanoparticles. I have a philosophy question for you. It is difficult to study? Yes, it's difficult. Do you like it? Yeah, sure. When it's difficult and you like it, it is very nice. Yes, I agree. The main thing is that it is interesting yes, for you. Yes, I agree. Do you have enough money here? Yes. For everything? Principally, yes. And for relax? Well, sure. Beer every Friday. You say that you are a 4th year PhD student. It means the last year. Yeah, there is my last year. What do you plan to do when you get the PhD degree? Okay, I'm planning to stay in the scientific career and continue to do research as a postdoc or research assistant here or in some other country. So, I really like it? Yes, I enjoy it. Cool. Okay, work is important thing, but you need to relax. What are you doing in outside? I mean, after work. Okay, there are a lot of activities here. For example, next week there will be four days of holidays and I am planning to play football with my friends. There are also many other different sport activities here. We plan to go somewhere outside, for example, to go to the mountains for one day. Or you can travel to see some castles. Well, okay, my friend, thank you for interview. You are welcome. Bye. See you. So, I have one more important question. Work is important thing. However, where are the students and all employees have lunch? There are different options. There is a cafeteria directly in this building, downstairs at the ground floor where meals are prepared. Usually there are three or four ready-made meals for lunch. A student's canteen is located in the hostel across the road. There is a slightly different choice of meals, but you can go there if you want. Plus, there are several classic Czech restaurants near about, where the prices are slightly higher. But there are more choices for food and drinks. And there is still a kitchen, so you can also bring with you if you are really want to save. Yes, there is, and it's not only about saving money. Yes, if you have no time, then you can quickly eat and go to work. Yes, we constantly have people here who warm up something in a microwave oven or on an electric stove, also making tea or coffee. And one more question. Please tell us which of the most, perhaps the main stages are waiting for a student during these four years of study. I mean, what are the most important stages that we simply must pass? Well, firstly, and you have already mentioned, that the PhD study lasts for four years. Each student must attend at least three lecture courses. They are related with the research topics that we do here. Plus, quantum mechanics is usually required. Lectures on quantum mechanics. The main stages are passing the exam on English language. Usually it happens in the second or third year of the study. And passing the state exam, which usually happens in the third, sometimes the fourth year of the study. These are two exams which simply must be passed. And these are quite large and complex. I mean, they require very serious preparation. And of course, you shouldn't forget about the third stage. This is actually the defense of the thesis. It means that a person must carry out the experiments, analyze them and publish the results. And on the basis of these data, 
the student must compose a dissertation and then defend it in front of a scientific board consisting of respected professors and scientists. Professors, ученых, да. So, for dissertation, if I remember right, the student needs to write an article. Is it right? I'm still not sure if any strict rules exist about it. We take for granted that at least one paper in a peer-reviewed scientific journal is required. Should a student to be as a first author? A person should be present in the list of authors. And honestly, I don't remember whether he must be the first author. Because the first author is usually the one who did the most important part of the work and wrote the article. But as a rule, all our students fulfill this condition. Because by the end of the fourth year, they already have several papers and at least in one of them, they are the first authors. It means they complete the biggest part of the work, they analyze the data, and they wrote the article. In fact, if you want to get here and go through the way of the doctor student, then you will not need as much as it seems. One of the main things is your desire. Because if you have no desire, then you should not go there. So, the doctor study, like a test. Since you will have to overcome at least four years of study, where you will study, do your scientific work, pass exams in Czech language, help your colleagues to complete something, and you will not see mountains of gold here. You can get only experience, education, and some direction for further development. And all everything depends only from you. Well, the second thing, you need money. You only need to have your money for the first month of your life here. Because after the first month of the study you will receive a stipend. If, for example, to calculate how much I spend and recalculate how much at the moment it will be, taking into account all the crisis, then you need to have with you somewhere around 600 euros. This includes a visa, the road to Prague, possible insurance and payment for accommodation for a month. On the road, the price may be different. Everything will depend on where you from get to the Prague. For example, I traveled to the Prague from Moscow. And as a result, out of those 600 euros, you will need to save the money necessary for food. This is about 100.5 euros. Yes, I agree, 600 euros is not a few money, but it is not so much. For example, I painted houses in the village to earn money for a trip. Or maybe some part of the money you can borrow here in Prague from your colleagues. So let's go. And if you feel that this study is necessary for you, then don't stop and you will get it. So I have one more question. How much time is needed to learn the Czech language? Well, this is very individual. Everything happens differently to everyone. And a lot depends on the environment around the person. Let's say, there are a number of Russian-speaking people in our group. These are usually from Russia or from Ukraine. If one doesn't make certain efforts to learn the Czech language and communicate only in Russian or Ukrainian, then one can learn it for a long, long time. But as a rule, I think half a year is enough to start speaking Czech at some basic level and understand what the surrounding people speak to you. We've had an extreme occasion when a person learned the Czech language very fast, in two or three months. But this was the case when the Russian-speaking people were not around. The guy was from Ukraine. I was away in Japan at that time, and all others were also somewhere else. So he had to speak the Czech language with the Czech people. Let me re remember, he arrived in October and I returned later in January. So in January, when I met him first, he was able to speak Czech language. Very rarely, the opposite examples also happen. When a person can hardly speak Czech language in seven or eight years. Let's say that all have different abilities for that. 
Ну и последний. So, the last important question. How many students do you have left at the department after obtaining a PhD degree? And if we cannot stay here, do you help them to go to the other institution or organizations? So it's rather difficult to stay at the department. This is a great rarity when students, after obtaining their PhD degree, remain for a long time and become members of the department. I mean, it's rather an exception than a rule. But on the other hand, students who receive the PhD degree have a big opportunity for the employment elsewhere. And then everything depends on a particular person. The graduates can find work either in Prague or just somewhere else in the Czech Republic. The labor market in the field of physical and mathematical research is quite wide. Or the people may continue to engage in scientific activities abroad as so-called postdocs. These are contracts for two or three years, sometimes four or five. As I said, we have quite good contacts established with various foreign groups and if the graded person expresses such a desire, to go somewhere abroad, then we contact our colleagues and organize these positions. So, it's clear, thanks. Uh, and finally, if you have your own wishes, then tell it for future doctoral students who want to come here. Maybe some parting words. I don't think I need to say some parting words. I just say that we have the opportunity to do science, we are interested in accepting new students, in transferring knowledge and experience to them. We are able to give them an open highway to life. So all the people who are interested in this are welcome. They may contact me and we will discuss all the details. Well, on this point, I want to say thank you, Andre, for the information. I think the provided information will be quite useful, especially for those who are interested in it. And all the additional information and links can be found in the description, where you will find all contacts you needed. So, I don't want to delay you more, you can go to work, and we are still a bit stay in the department and maybe we will walk around the department. <laughs> <laughs> so, right now we will visit this holy place, try our happiness to find the students. Oh, Daniela, we will already seen. Hello. So, what is here the place? Students are usually working here. Not bad. But there is no anyone. Let's go to the next room. Oh, hello. Hello. Could I take a little from your time? Yes, of course. Take the microphone, please. So, what is your name? My name is Suren Alagli. I'm a first-year PhD student at Charles University. Cool, the first-year student. This is nice. This is what we need to find out the full information and your feelings about studying here. And I have a question. What are you doing here? Well, in general, what did you manage to do? How did you start your study? Well, since I'm here just the first year, I'm starting study in October, now April. And during this time I'm just learning everything and learning to use different experimental equipment and of course help my supervisor in different experiments and to slowly join this oven work. It's great! Do you like it? Yes, 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 on 100%. I didn't expect that it would be so interesting and it was here mystery to me in the world of physics. Since I'm an engineer and uh, I think I managed to join this sphere. Is it difficult to study here? Well, of course it is not very simple, but you can do it, if you devote enough time and energy for it. 
then it is quite possible for any person. And other question. Are you have enough money for everything, for accommodation, for relax, other things? If only stipend, then there is enough quite accurate. So, it is enough for food, accommodation and one two times in three months to go out of Prague to see the other town. It means you can live on this money. Yes, yes, it is possible. What are your plan to do after study? I don't know if you already think about it. Well, how to say, uh, I have a dream to get into the space industry. And it seems to me that this department is very suitable for this purpose, since we study both the plasma and the interaction of the surface with different particles. And I hope that I can find a place in the space program. Well, if you want, of course you get it. And the last question. What do you do here besides work? What do you have here in terms of relax? activities, hobbies, and anything else. There are a lot of theaters, cinemas, museums, and galleries in Prague. So, if you are interested in this aspect of life, then in Prague there are always places to go and you can find a new place every time. Also, you have World Czech Republic. Yes, yes, and also travel into the Czech Republic. As I said, if money remains, transportation for students is relatively cheap, so you can get to many beautiful places in Czech Republic. Cool. So, thank you for the interview. Good luck with your work. Good luck. So, that's all for today. I think in this video we have provided you with quite detailed and interesting information about how to become a doctor of science at the Department of Macromolecular Physics in Charles University. So, additional information you can find in the description. And if you want to study here and you have any question, please look for contacts on the department website and ask everything that's interesting for you. You can ask in English or in Russian, as you like. Ciao!